would like to give the floor to BBC. It has not asked anything yet. Mr. President, uh, John Simpson. Господин президент, меня зовут Джон Симпсон. Я представляю BBC. Let me put on the headphones in order to understand your question correctly. Okay. It is not working yet. You see, you see what's going on. You know, my office always make themselves indispensable. That's what they're doing. Mr. President, uh, John Simpson from, from the BBC. Uh, Western countries almost universally now believe that there's a new Cold War and that you, frankly, have <coughs> decided to create that. Uh, we see almost daily Russian aircraft taking sometimes quite dangerous maneuvers towards Western <coughs> airspace. That must be done on your orders. You're the commander-in-chief. It must have been your orders that sent uh, Russian troops into the territory of a sovereign country. Crimea first, and then whatever it is that's going on in eastern Ukraine. Now you've got a big problem with the currency of, of Russia. And you're going to need help and support and understanding from outside countries, particularly from the West. So can I say to you, can I ask you now, would you care to take this opportunity to say to people from the West that you have no desire to carry on with a new Cold War and that you will do whatever you can to sort out the problems in Ukraine. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your question. As for our exercises and maneuvers, as, a, as well as the development of our military forces, you've stated that Russia, to a certain extent, contributed to the tension that we are witnessing in the world. Of course, Russia has contributed to the tension, but only in a sense. The only thing we've done is that we've been protecting our interests in a tougher way. We are not aggressive, we are not attacking anyone in the political sense of the world. We are not encroaching upon anyone's interests, we are just protecting our own. And the miscontent of the, our American partners is due to what we are doing. And uh, it is not due to what we do in some security areas. It is not due to the maneuvers that could provoke tensions, for example. Let me explain what I mean. You've mentioned the flights of our aviation, including our strategic aviation flights. Do you know that Russia, at the beginning of the 90s, totally stopped the flights of our strategic aviation in the far patrolling regions? We totally stopped them, to the contrary of what the Soviet Union had done. But the American strategic aircraft with nuclear weapons on board continued their flights. Why did they do so? Whom were they threatening? So we did not fly. We stick to that practice. But maybe only two or three years ago we renewed the flights, we resumed the flying practice. So who provoked the tension? Was it us? I don't think so. We only have two military bases abroad in Kyrgyzstan because it is strategically dangerous direction. We organized a base in Kyrgyzstan upon the request of Mr. Akayev, who was the president back then, because the terrorists entered the country. And we also have a military base in Tajikistan, at the border with Afghanistan. But I suppose you must be interested in preserving our bases there. And American bases are all over the world. And what you are trying to say is that we are being aggressive. But we should speak based on the common sense. And uh, what about the Americans? What are they doing? What about the tactical nuclear weapons, for example? 
The budget of our Ministry of Defense for the next year has grown, and uh, at the moment it is about 50 billion dollars in total. And the Pentagon's budget is 10 times higher. I think the Congress recently adopted the budget of $575 billion. And you are trying to say that we are pursuing an aggressive policy. Does it sound logical or reasonable to you? Is that us who move our military forces to the borders of other countries? Is that us who move our military structures and NATO's infrastructure closer to other countries? Does anyone listen to us at all? Is anyone engaged in the dialogue with us? No. What we hear is just mind your own business. Every country has the right to choose the ways to ensure its security. But why are we not allowed to do that then? We are supposed to have that right too. I already mentioned that in my address to the Federal Assembly, speaking about the ABM Treaty, who resigned unilaterally from the treaty that was one of the cornerstones of the whole security system in the continent, who withdrew from the anti-ballistic missile treaty. The United States did so, and they create new threats for us. They are deploying their strategic ABM systems not only in Alaska, but also in Europe, in Romania and Poland, straight next to our borders. And we are trying to say that we are pursuing an aggressive policy. The question is where we want whether we want to maintain relations based on equal rights. Yes, we want to build relations based on equal rights, but with due respect of our interests in economic and political area. We've been maintaining negotiations on the WTO for many years now, for 19 years, and we believed that the agreements we reached were supposed to be solid. I'm not speaking about who is guilty and who is not. I believe that we are right in the course of the Ukrainian crisis. We believe that we are right and our Western partners are wrong. But we joined the WTO and there are WTO rules in violation of all those rules and in violation of the UN Charter. There have been sanctions introduced against Russia in an absolutely illegitimate and illegal way. Is the task who is wrong again? The only thing we want is to develop relations based on equal rights in security and economy. We would like to work together in nuclear weapons non-proliferation. We want to work together to counteract terrorism, transnational crime, organized crime, the spread of communicable diseases, including the disease caused by Ebola virus. We will work together in economy if our partners want to cooperate with us.